children at high concentration it aggregates together to form a molecule having colloidal dimension this particular molecule is called a mesel this mesel has got the cleansing action or on the surface of cloth where there is oil and grease which is purely organic in nature there the soap molecule form a mesel like this are, are you is it clear to you what is a mesel at low concentration it acts as a normal molecule soaps and detergents at high concentration when you add more detergents or soaps whatever it is detergents are lauryl sulfates so it, they are salts of lauryl sulfate so, uh, they are i mean not salts they are lauryl sulfates when we put detergents and soaps in water at a particular concentration with which this mesel formation where this molecule organic parts are aggregate together i mean projected inside and ionic parts are projecting out a bigger molecule of colloidal dimension is created they will never combine together because this end carries same similar charge this end this na plus if i remove i can write it as coo minus because it is ionic entity this is co minus this is also enough so this negative ends will never combine together they repel each other so never it combines together or never it will settle down colloids will never precipitate out so this case we have to discuss the cleansing action of soap which i will discuss in detail to you uh, i hope it is you understand what it is there is a particular concentration above which only the mesel formation takes place we call that concentration as critical mesel concentration the concentration above which the mesel formation takes place that particular concentration is called critical mesel concentration and the mesel formation takes place only above a particular temperature because in washing machines you are familiar we normally there is a temperature options hot wash is preferable to for more cleaning of clothes Clo clothes will be more cleaned when we use hot water why we cannot use cold water can can we why we don't use cold water is the mesel formation will not take place if the temperature is below a particular value or the temperature above which the mesel formation takes place that temperature is called craft temperature the concentration with which the mesel formation takes place that concentration is called critical mesel concentration and the temperature above which the mesel formation takes place that temperature is called a craft temperature now we are going to discuss the cleansing action of soap this is a very important board question so many times it is asked what are mesels what are what is meant by craft temperature explain the cleansing action of soap as i have told you soap is a sodium salt of or salt of a higher fatty acids here i have written stearic acid which is having 17 carbon atom c17 h35 cooh cona i mean at a particular concentration suppose we have added detergent in a bucket of water a soap in a bucket of water we have agitated nicely then we are soaking our cloth your cloth contain oil or grease it is not necessary that grease from any vehicle or something our hair contain oil that oil also we cannot see the oil droplet but it is there in your cloth so that oil droplet which is there in the cloth which is an organic entity oil or grease is an organic entity this soap or detergent molecule which part is organic you are aware this part is organic the principle is like dissolves like so this part will dissolve inside this part will project out of course naturally so the organic part many molecule this is coo minus na plus na plus it will ionize as co minus natural what happened a mesel is formed so many 
soap molecules many soap molecules have dissolved this organic entity has dissolved in organic part which is oil and grease why oil and grease cannot be washed by water there is an interfacial tension water is an ionic solvent oil and grease are organic compounds they cannot mix each other so this soap when the organic entity dissolve in oil and grease the ionic entity dissolve in water this is in a bucket of water it happens na here yeah, there is lot of water inside so this part dissolve in water whereas this part dissolve in oil so that it remove the interfacial tension between oil and water water can easily wash away the dirt i hope it is clear to you this remove the interfacial tension because one entity it act as a bridge between oil and water allow water to go inside and wash it out so it can clean uh, like a dirt oil or grease or any organic material which is on the cloth so easily and clearly i hope it is clear and now we are going to discuss the preparation of colloids how the colloids are prepared you are aware that many things uh, ma mainly the drugs which we are taking uh, like uh, syrups what all syrups we are taking cough syrups and even uh, the milk of magnesia milk of magnesia are aware gelusil which we are taking uh, this all are of co in colloidal form why because its surface area is more and it will be easily assimilated in the body so that its action will its reaction will be surface in surface area is more its action also will be more of course so the, we need to prepare various types of colloids for various purposes so various methods we use for preparation of colloids first method is chemical method as the name indicates it is chemical reaction only first reaction we use double decomposition oxidation reduction and even hydrolysis for the preparation of colloids first reaction you can see here on the board arsenic arsenous oxide react with hydrogen sulfide it form as2s3 and h2o it's a double decomposition double decomposition in the sense this compound oxide decomposed h2s is decomposed both the compound decomposed this arsenic part is combined with the sulfur hydrogen part is combined with the oxygen if i write an ro it comes like this the molecule both totally decomposed molecules both totally decomposed and they combine it has it become a it has the, then the method is called a double decomposition here you can see it is oxidation sulfur is in minus 2 oxidation state the oxidation state become zero so that the, this is an oxidation process this is reduction it was in plus 3 oxidation state accepted electrons it becomes silver means it is reduction here it is hydrolysis of course hydrolysis is addition of water you can see ferric chloride become ferric hydroxide of course you will be doing in your practical the preparation of ferric hydroxide salt you will be doing in your practicals now this is chemical method of preparation next one bradix arc method this bradix arc method is used for the preparation of gold and silver and platinum salts as you know they are non reactive metals what we do is we make either gold or silver or platinum whose salt has to be made a suitable solvent or an electrolyte will be filled in a vessel which is covered with an ice bath this is a gold electrode suppose it is gold salt has to be prepared gold electrode is being kept very high large voltage electricity passed through the electrode so that electrode will vaporize next method of preparation of colloid is bradix arc method this is generally used for the preparation of colloids of gold silver and platinum which are non reactive metals to prepare the salt what we do is take an ice bath this is an external covering double hold vessel double walled vessel where inside we keep an ice bath between the walls we take a suitable solvent here a yeah, dispersion medium here electrodes are kept inside large amount of electricity high voltage is passed through the electrodes so that it will vaporize the electrode that much voltage will pass through so that it will vaporize this vapors will be condensed and it will be collected inside this medium so that colloid of gold and silver is being prepared 
this method, this was also a one mark question. Uh, what is the principle of breading sock method or how the gold and silver soles are being prepared? This was a question earlier. Now, third method of preparation of colloid is peptization. Peptization means conversion of a precipitate into colloid either by adding a suitable electrolyte or by grinding and making it into fine powder of colloidal size. This peptization is a method of converting precipitate. Precipitate you are familiar with the lab, we prepare so many precipitates to colloid. What is the difference between this precipitate and colloid? Precipitate the particle size is too big. We make it small either by adding an electrolyte or by grinding it into fine particles and mixing with the medium that is called a peptization. That is all about a preparation of colloids. Now it comes to purification of colloids. Colloids purification, normally we use three methods, dialysis, electrodialysis and ultrafiltration. As the term dialysis indicates, colloid will be placed in a parchment membrane where the colloidal particles are kept inside medium and phase. There are so many impurities dissolved inside the dispersion medium. This will be kept in a flow of water. Here it is water. This is a flow of water. This parts cellophane membrane or parchment membrane will allow the passage of only the dispersion medium or I mean the solvent where the size of the holes of the cellophane is too small it will allow only the dispersion medium to come out. Once the medium has come out, the entire impurities also will come out because it is in a dissolved form. So that you will get inside the pure colloidal particles. This membrane inside you get the pure colloidal particle back inside. You add the medium, pure medium and prepare new colloid. The speed of this is called a dialysis. The speed of dialysis can be increased if you are because if you keep two electrodes inside the system. This is a dialyzer. This apparatus is called a dialyzer. Inside the dialyzer, if we keep two electrodes, one positive and ne one negative electrodes, because the dissolved impurity in the dispersion medium is of either positive charge or negative charge. So, the ions will move fast from the back to the outside so that the dialysis process will be faster. Is it clear to you? When we keep two electrodes inside, when we keep two electrodes inside the dialyzer, pass electricity so that the dissolved particles will come out through the membrane and the dialysis process will be faster. So, this process is called the electrodialysis. The process of dialysis made faster by passing electricity which is called electrodialysis. The third method is called ultrafiltration. Normally, the filter paper allow the dispersion medium as well as the colloidal particle to go through. So, the filtering and separating the medium and the colloidal phase, dispersion medium and the dispersed phase is not possible. The third method of purification is ultrafiltration. Ordinary filter paper cannot filter the impurities which is present in a colloid because it filters the dispersed phase and dispersion medium. The entire colloid will pass through, so the pore size is big. To make the pore size small, now the pore size is big. To make it small, we make, we make the pore size small by adding colloid on, which is a 4 percent solution of nitrocellulose in ether and alcohol. So that the pore size has become small, it allow only the dispersion medium to pass through. Dispersed phase will be left here. We increase the speed of this filtration by using suction so that the medium can be brought down very fast. The dispersed phase which is left out on the ultra filter, the filter paper specially designed filter paper is called ultra filter will be mixed with water and the new colloid will be means the pure colloid will be prepared. 
that's all about the purification of colloids now we are going to discuss the properties of colloids in properties we have so many properties to discuss i'll discuss in brief first one the colligative properties colligative properties you have studied in solutions since the particle size is small it won't show that much effective colligate property as a true solution shows but it shows some extent colligative properties such as depression in freezing point elevation in boiling point osmotic pressure everything it shows but it is not as to that extent that a true solution shows next one tindall effect this is a very important board question what is meant by tindall effect this you have studied in class 9th what is tindall effect when light passes through any colloidal solution see in national geographic and animal planet you have seen dense forest when they show between the trees the light penetrates down that path is visible and the light the dust particles are dancing inside you have seen many times in that even if we go for to a movie the, nowadays multiplex it is not visible otherwise theaters also or in any show we go to an auditorium where there is complete darkness you can see the light penetrates inside and the dust particles are dancing that same thing happens when you keep a colloidal solution in a vessel put light allow light to pass through the path of the light will be visible inside due to scattering of light by colloidal particles means in a vessel there is there are colloidal particles when light pass through it gets scattered in all directions by the colloidal particles due to the dimension of the colloidal size the particle size is apt to that it can scatter a particular wavelength so the solution according to the wavelength of visible spectrum with which it scatter this appears colored the path of the light appears colored or the path of the light when it pass through a colloidal solution is visible due to the scattering of light by colloidal particles with that effect is called a tindall effect why tindall effect operates because of the scattering of light by colloidal particles sky it appears blue that is also a board question why sky appears blue because blue light is scattered by the dust particles as well as water molecules which is present in the sky so that this blue color blue wavelength is being scattered so we see sky as blue in color now you have you know why the color is also what is tindall effect also now it comes to coagulation coagulation means colloidal particles are charged why the